Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 11 say. of the Calypso Cigar Review <laughs> Podcast. We're in the double digits, buddy. Double digits. And today we were One and one. one Two and one. cigars yes. side by side. That's right. All upright would be 11. Yes, it's like a symbolism type thing. Absolutely. And today we're reviewing a, a special cigar, the Vega Fina Master 2012. Peace. Masterpiece. Peace 2012. Piece of Master. Yes. See, this just says Master 2012, but okay, Masterpiece. Okay. We'll Whatever. go with Masterpiece. Matt wrote Masterpiece on the label, so I'm yeah. assuming. And it is a 5x52 Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. Binder is Dominican Olor. Olor? I guess. L-O-O-L-O-R. The oh. filler is Dominican Pilot, Piloto. Loto. Yes, practice this shit before I say it. Here. Strength is medium, supposedly full bodied. We'll see. You've smoked this. Before, I've had right? this. It's been a while, but it's really, it's really good. And yeah, we're yes, we're reviewing a Vega Fina. Vega Fina, and uh, which a lot of you snobs are going to laugh at. But if you've been paying attention, the last two years they've done a limited edition for each individual year. And last year it was the Samum S U M U M, and that was an excellent smoke. We probably sold 20 boxes of that in two months. That's yep. how, how good that cigar was. Yeah, and that was originally only like a European release. So Yeah, and uh, it's uh, these are flying off the shelves here as well, but we, we have plenty, and we have plenty enough to do a podcast special, which we will talk to you about at the end. And we've got, the, uh, we've got website news that website we will news. also share Sweet. with you at the end in the last segment. I'm going to cut and light my cigar. I've already lit mine. Yeah, well, I'm... Yeah. Cold Draw was great on mine. i got to see where the... Yeah, nice, nice Make sure taste. I don't cut it wrong here. Don't cut too much off. I'm looking. Noob. Noob. It's not making Noob. sure. It's dark in here. It is dark in here in the Richardson Cigar. Gosh, I always call it Richardson Cigar. <laughs> the Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge in Richardson, Texas. Ooh, that's a nice open cold Isn't draw. Isn't that great? Mm. Me likey. Tastes good before you even light it, too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Just chew on that. Yeah. And I got my little Alec Bradley tabletop doohickey here. Give this a Which go. I might need to do. Yeah, because I talked so much that I wasn't puffing. Look at that, Brandon lighting a cigar. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, it went out. Uh, out. Well, that happens. What can you do? I love that sound. Okay. Sound of lighting and cutting a cigar. Mm-hmm. Tasty, and we're also pairing it with some. Maker's Mark, yeah, bourbon, very generic bourbon, but hey, but, it's but you know. middle, it's middle shelf and fantastic, one of my favorites. Yeah, it's a good go-to bourbon. It's not as good as the Garrison Brothers we had last week, obviously, but uh, yeah. And sad news, I didn't get to go out to the Garrison Brothers uh, distillery because my dad had other plans involving a fence. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> Which he's like, we got to do this fence thing, and we got to do all this other stuff. We drove around half the day, didn't even do the fence. So. Oh, great. Yeah, well, what can you do? We'll go oh, next well. time, though. Yeah, we'll go. Maybe we'll do a field trip down there. We're going down to the uh, Cats event at the end of May. At least I am. So if you can manage to go down, We're, maybe we can go a, do yeah. Garrison's on the way to the Cats yeah, thing. not a bad idea. We'll see that'd how that works pretty, out. It'd be pretty epic to do both of those in the same weekend. That would be cool. That'd be so a good weekend. Cats is the uh, Cigar Aficionados Trader and Sales Group. It's a private invite only group on facebook but it's a great group because they they give a lot back to the uh, cigars for warriors and actually i think the guy who runs that thing uh storm boehm is the uh the guy who runs uh cigars for warriors so right great site to be a member of if you're not if you're on facebook um and you see me on there brandon luna or randy rankin uh friend us and let us know if you want us to if you want to be in the uh, cats group and yeah. we'll we'll stick yeah. you in there and then let you know about all the cool stuff that they're doing yeah so so far, hey, this is not bad. This tastes really good, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Really, really wide open draw. So mm-hmm. if you're going to smoke one of these, you know, don't go puffing, you know, a mile a minute. You're going to want to take your time with this so it doesn't get hot on you. Right. Mm-hmm. As I was puffing hard right then because I just wanted to get some smoke flowing. Puff hard. New movie with Bruce Willis and <laughs> Ashton Kutcher. Justin Long. Well, oh, there you go. God. A David, David Schwimmer starter kit there. And Justin <laughs> Long. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the hell is he doing in a Die Hard movie. Are you kidding <laughs> That's me? That's ridiculous. Uh, now, and when I saw him, and I'm like, I hope they're not hoping this guy's going to take right. over the franchise for oh, God. freaking Bruce Willis. At least it wasn't that Shia LaBeau guy or whatever oh, his name God, is. Shia LaBeouf, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, he's kind of he's going – I, I kind of got to respect the guy a little bit because, number one, he knocked out um, – what's his name? Uh, Bane. Yeah. I'm Bane. 
Mm, knocked yeah. him out when they were making the movie Lawless. Apparently, they got okay. they used to give each other a lot of shit on the set, really? and apparently they started getting into fisticuffs. And Shia like uh, knocked him out. Oh, cool! And he was in an interview on like Entertainment Tonight or something. He's like, "Yeah, he's a tough kid. He knocked me out." I'm like, "I don't know if I'd really admit that Shia LaBeouf <laughs> no. knocked you out." I'm like, could you please? Especially don't. if you're just getting ready to play Bane, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. Like, it's like I'm Bane, and I'm going to kill you, Batman. <laughs> no, but Shia LaBeouf knocked you out, so not really that scary, yeah, you, dude. You've been knocked down a peg, literally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is very mm, yep. yummy. Plus, he's kind of take. From what I understand, he's not doing the the Hollywood thing anymore. He's going to step away and do more independent oh, stuff. Good. So maybe good. that'll be a good avenue for him to maybe he'll become a better actor. Who knows? Yeah, we'll right see. now, he's just the whiny guy that's in Hollywood movies. It's really Disturbia weird. wasn't bad. No, you know, Disturbia was The knockoff bad. of uh, Rear Window. Yeah, like Eagle Eye or whatever that one was. The, where it's like oh, I never the, even computer, saw it. That was freaking The trailer looked terrible. Horrible. I wasn't interested. It was so bad. So unbelievably <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Mm. Goes well with Maker's Mark is delicious. Mark. Yes, it is delicious. So, so yeah, not bad. I mean, I, you know, I've always heard kind of mm, pseudo negative things about Vega Fina, but I think mostly what people are talking about is the core line. Mm-hmm. And when you get into the the, the individual Limited, unique releases, you know, then yeah. they seem to put a little more effort into them. So yeah, decent cigar. And uh, Vega Fina is also uh, obviously an Altidus mm-hmm. product. So and right off the bat, I mean, you know, it's not real spicy. I'd say it's kind of I'd say I'd say mild to me, but probably medium to most mm-hmm. right off the start. Yeah. Um, the right through the nose is real clean. There's not a lot of uh, spice. But what do you think so far? Uh, I'm I'm picking up a flavor that I can't distinguish at the moment. But uh, hmm. yeah, it's definitely a medium a medium for for me. Well, yeah. mild for me, medium for others, like you said. Yeah, it just but, depends. But it's chock full of flavor, though. Yeah, it's really definitely got some leather to it, and you yeah. know, it's a little. Slight hint of coffee. It's not like you know the normal Nicaraguan coffee that, that you might, get. Might, yeah, that might be what I was. But it's, it's ever so slight. It's not like a whole lot of it. There's very very little in the way of spice though, which is mm-hmm. kind of surprising. Usually you get a little more spice with that kind yeah. of a Nicaraguan right thing going well, on. Well, that so. Dominican binder probably yeah. mellows it out a little bit. Yeah. So we'll see what happens here when we get into it. So uh, summer's coming up. So we're kind of excited about that, except for the fact that it's going to be a hundred gazillion degrees in Texas. Oh, but uh, I'm never excited about summer. I- I'm always excited about being able to smoke more so yeah. you know then get out and go to the backyard and smoke a cigar um, i'm typically a morning smoker in the summer and the evening also i'll go yeah. out before everybody's up on the weekend and i'll go out after everybody's asleep on the weekend just because it's usually cooler then yeah and where do you where do you smoke in this i mean you obviously work here so you have yes yeah, so i can smoke here which, um you know you suck but <laughs> I, we have a customer and a neighbor and a friend of mine that lives down the street and uh, he walks his dog about 10 30 11 o'clock at night so i'll venture out then when it's a little cooler not much here in texas we don't get much relief like a lot of warm weather states do at night yeah but i'll smoke there and you know the rest of the day it's here at the store you know i've never done the dog walk smoke i have a really? dog i walk my dog i just don't do the dog walk smoke i just need to try that you should that's yeah. a rite of passage with you it's bonding between you and your dog yeah I'll just ash on her <laughs> 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 i don't know what i mean what's the what's a good dog walk smoke you're talking like the nesta miranda you yeah, know, like coffee, break, coffee or break or you know something in the corona, corona size yeah take corona yeah absolutely i have to put aside some dog walking smokes that sounds like a good idea there's an extra reason to smoke and i get some exercise as i'm killing myself slowly there you go. <laughs> <laughs> killing yourself and walking yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Get hit by a car trying to light my cigar <laughs> now i wouldn't sm- I wouldn't use an expensive cigar because you're exposing it to the elements. Yeah. You know, if it's windy and... So probably not a really Connecticut. Hot. Probably go for like a little... Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. the Miranda Coffee Break yeah, or... Yeah, that'd be um, good. What's the other ones? Um, there, I did that damn noise again. That's that is, really bad. What are you doing? I heard that. Yeah. What are you doing? This I'm is like the annoying African. segment this of the... the <laughs> 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 I don't know. Um, so Nesta Miranda Coffee Break could be a good one. Probably also like the uh, that new uh, Alec Bradley Punk. The Punk. Yeah, yeah, which is the basically a small, it's a tiny little yeah, version of the, uh, it's the Black Market. The smallest black of the market, Black Market, yeah. yeah. And we'll is, be reviewing that or at least talking about that coming up. Yep. Yeah, I just smoked one earlier today and it was full of flavor. Yeah. So if smoke. you like the, uh, the uh, Drew Estate Muat, the Mayuzi weighs a ton, this is probably a cheaper alternative to that because those those are they're kind of very similar. Yeah, they're very similar. Um, it is basically like a stronger black market. So if you're yeah. already a fan of the black market, yeah. boing, bonus. And I liked that. And I'm not, you know, I liked the black market, but I really liked the punk. I thought mm-hmm. that was really good. Uh, of course, the uh, Rocky 92 Petite Corona is a great size cigar for. Uh, and of course, our favorite, walking. the JDN um, oh, Dark the Pelagroso. Rojo Pelagroso. Yeah, 
another good dog and that's a very cost effective yeah dog walking smoke. this thing has some great smoke i mean the smoke is really oh, the white and blowing just, all, yeah, yeah it's, and the ashes me, look at my medium freaking, gray yeah look at my yeah, i got, got like a razor, razor sharp, sharp burn line there razor sharp Ooh. yeah me likey mm-hmm. and what do these go for uh ten dollar range no, they're in the 650 to 750 really range, i'm thinking yeah absolutely yeah. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad, Batman. And I'll, anyone uh, out there that can find a Samoom, the last year edition, mm-hmm. find it and smoke it. You'll love that cigar. Oh, yeah? You guys and, don't and have save a few. No, we're put we're aside out. somewhere. We, we the... were going to, but we couldn't. Yeah. People just jumped on it. Hmm. So, yeah, you owe it to yourself to try that one as well. Yeah. The Vega Fina Samoom. If you can find it, smoke it. And save a couple for future generations. So what do you typically do in the summers? What are your summer activities? Uh, I stay in, I'm, I'm made out of wax, so I melt. <laughs> and uh, You are white. I am pretty white, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I typically, when I get off work, I head to the house and I'm a couch, you know, a vegetable for the rest of the night. Yeah. You know, but uh, my activities is... A uh, big baseball fan, so mm-hmm. the MLB Network pops on. Yeah, watch that till the Rangers game comes on. Then I watch a, the Rangers game. And I have a great idea, by the way, and I don't know if it's actually been done, so but I'm going to tell you off. I, mic. I don't want to tell you on mic because then yeah. someone will be like, "Oh, it's a great idea." And yeah, tell me off them. mic. It's awesome. You're going to love it. And then I'll tell the listeners if it really was awesome. No, it is awesome. Oh, it is. Okay, it is. You'll you'll okay. appreciate. I'm it. I'm looking forward to it, especially since you like a. What we just talked about, you liking baseball? Not, yeah, don't no. You know, don't be saying my ideas, but <laughs> my idea, you have an is, idea baseball. is baseball. <laughs> my idea That's is baseball. Hell of an idea. Play it outside. That is a hell of an idea. <laughs> That'll probably go over what because I've already named a, a network after it. Well, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> MLB. I think it should be called MLB. Wow, that's a great idea. Yeah, major You're right. Major love baseball. Some another yeah. word that goes better than love. major and league. 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 That's it. Major league of, baseball. Yeah. A, a group of people that play genius. this new sport that I just yeah, made up called baseball. It's pretty awesome. Anyway, so um, what have you been smoking so, this week? What have you been? What have you been? What has Randy been smoking? That is a good question. What have I? Well, I've smoked a couple of Pelagrosos, of yeah. course. Surprise, surprise. Uh, Anything I tried, new? I tried the Punk. Yeah, I really liked it. Did you get to smoke one of those Nika Piros or no? I did. You did. Okay. Yes. The Alec and we're going to definitely be reviewing that coming okay. up too. So we don't want to give away too much. Uh, just. Uh, very happy I smoked it. I'll say that. Okay, cool. I think uh, Alec Bradley fans are in for a treat. Excellent. Excellent. You've I, got one see. to smoke. Yeah. You haven't smoked it yet. I haven't. I'm going to wait until we find out. I guess you're going to be getting them anyway. When are you yeah. guys getting the official? Probably in, uh, by the time this podcast airs, we will have it. Okay, so I'm not too worried about smoking yeah. that one then. I might smoke it after the show. There you go. We'll see. So I, I smoked a couple of new ones this week. I, I, I went through and I, I reseasoned my humidor with mm-hmm. the instruction of Matt and you, Thank and you. it's awesome now. And um, I managed to fill it full of onesies, the stuff that I have one of. You know, yeah. like I only have a couple of these, or I have two of these, or and just filled it full of that stuff. And that's my grab go to for every day. And today I smoked a um, San Latano Oval Maduro. Are you going to keep doing that noise? I am going to keep doing that. <laughs> All right. Noise. What's it called? San San Latano. It won. It was in the yeah, uh, top yeah, ten yeah. for Scar Aficionado this year. I think. A it's, customer gave me that. It's okay. It yeah. wasn't top 10 material, in my yeah. humble opinion. But it right. was okay. It reminded me a lot of the one I gave you that was an internet cigar. Yeah. We won't okay. mention here, but yeah. yeah. And it's, um, you know, for the price, I think it, you probably smoked the one I gave you previously and be okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So, But it was okay. I smoked that. I smoked a, a Gurkha Red Witch um, that I was given at the event yeah. that I went to. And um, another Tatuaje Black Lancero, which is delicious. I had a Tatuaje the other day. What did I have? Yeah, the black lens, the one I gave you, the black Lancero. Yeah, but someone gave me another. One. Oh, did they? Yes. I have no idea. Then was it was it a red band? No. It was, was a brown a, band. Brown, I think. Brown was it a little short guy that have two bands or one band? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but did you like it? I, I liked it a lot. Yeah, I I liked see, the we don't, we don't carry that cigar, so I, I don't know the name of it or anything. But damn uh, it, man! It was nice. Mm-hmm. I, I've liked everything I've had Tatuaje. Mm-hmm. It's just. Uh, our demographic doesn't seem to. Yeah, it's weird how that works because water. it's um, you know, cigars are very regional, I think, and it depends yeah. on where you live and what the people in that area seem to gravitate to. And I think a percentage of that comes from what the people at the brick and mortar store recommend. Right. But it's also, you know, once you recommend something, you know, say you guys recommend the JDN Dark Rojo like crazy, I'm sure. Yeah. And you sell it like crazy right. here, but that may not be a cigar that's 
readily smoked at another B and M, say in Frisco. Yeah. So you know it is based on what you guys recommend versus um, what people like. But if you recommend the good stuff people like, then you sell a crap ton of it. Right. So. And for those of you outside of Texas, Frisco is about twenty five miles from where we're at. Yeah, it's not. It's close. I mean, that's yeah. when you say Dallas, Fort Worth area, you're encompassing Everything. Richardson and Frisco and and parts of. Collin County, who yeah. Dallas and Fort Worth are not even in. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But that's, you know, it's kind of one of those things. You're talking about subdivisions inside a bigger thing. So, but um, yeah, I smoked, I smoked quite a few this week. Um, I went to an event um, over the weekend and smoked like 10 cigars in one day, which is <laughs> my limit times four, that's, <laughs> probably. That's a, that's a pretty hefty amount. Yeah, it was. A, and it's just one of those things. When you, If you've ever gone to a cigar event, um, definitely go. It's worth going because you get to try a lot of new stuff. You get to meet the reps and you get to walk around, have a good time with your friends. But you will typically... Uh, what I'd recommend, if you don't want to smoke 10 cigars at a four-hour event, is have a cigar in your hand, even if it's not lit, because then people will stop giving you cigars. <laughs> the second you don't have a cigar in your hand, They're, you either got a friend going, why aren't you smoking yeah. something? Here, smoke something. They'll give you one. Right. Or you got the rep going, hey, so you don't have a cigar in your hands. Yeah. And if you really want to try something new, just tell the rep you haven't tried it before. And, hey, guess what? You're getting a You'll cigar. Get yeah. 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 So. I was expecting treats from Brandon this week, and I didn't get any. Yeah. Shame. Sorry. I usually bring you something, but you know what? Screw you. <laughs> but yeah, no, I got, Are you hearing that in my throat? It. Yeah. What the heck is going on with yeah, us today? It's boogers. It's boogers. No, that was like a swallow of the maker's mark. You could hear me swallowing it. That was weird. I don't know. Maybe we got the microphones tuned or two. No, they're about the same. We're probably hearing more than we're actually yeah. getting on the recording. Who knows? Hopefully. I don't know. Hopefully. But um, no, if you I can got, hear it, we apologize. I got about 30 plus cigars at the event plus all the stuff that my friends gave me. So you've got a hefty stack at my house. You just have to come get it and have some barbecue or something okay or uh you know 22 ounce ribeyes or something like that. there you go that sounds like a good deal to me sounds like a plan yep you do anything special for mother's day no hmm? no i'm uh well, I'm you're not orphan. a mother i'm an orphan oh okay yeah are you really well an adult orphan both my parents oh, are gone. Okay. Yeah. i'm sorry to hear that that's too bad i'll no. cut that out that's horrible <laughs> <laughs> Just brought the show down a huge pack. <laughs> right. no Giant pegs. <laughs> I lost my mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my mom lives in town, and she smokes cigars, so she's going to come over on uh, this Sunday because Mother's Day she's working, yeah. and we're going to have a little um, grilling session and smoke some cigars. That'll be fun. Yeah, that'd be cool. Make some fajitas. Is that this some, weekend, Mother's Day? Yeah, that'll be I haven't well, even been paying attention to Mother's it. Mother's Day's next weekend, next weekend but she okay. works, so we're going to do it this weekend. Get That's it out cool. Of the way. So that'll be fun. Yeah. And it's cool that she smokes cigars. You see um, that she smokes cigars? She smokes <laughs> them? I keep them? making up words. You're crazy. She smokes cigars. At a, at a cigop? At a cigop. <laughs> that, that was from a few weeks ago. Yeah. At a cigar a cigop. A cigop. <laughs> Jeez, I'm going to make a, like, a cut up yeah, all we need the a, words I made up. A nice gag reel. Jeez. Yeah. So that's cool. Some will say we've done 11 episodes of gag reel, but that's okay. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Plus the little the sub, little sub, sub episodes with yeah. the... Uh, all the, the uh, Esteban Carreras right. thingy and some other stuff we've done. But oh, we've um, gotten our Chilean uh, listeners back. Oh, I yeah? was looking at the numbers the other day; they're back. Cool. We're I like, saw we had some can- uh, some Canadian listeners too. Did you yeah, see that? Saw that. Yeah, some people up there. As and well. there's one, and I feel remiss. We had like twenty something downloads from a country that is just a symbol. What is that country? They just show the symbol of it. They don't tell us the name of this country. I don't know. Maybe it's Vulcan or something. Oh, no. I need, <laughs> I, to, I need to look up the symbol because uh, if we got that many people downloading there, I'd, we'd like to say hi to them. Give them a shout out, right? Absolutely. Yep. And I do want to thank all the people that support us. Um, we've been getting a lot of uh, comments on Stogie Friends and uh, Cigar Asylum and a couple of the other forums, and we definitely appreciate you guys listening. If you would do us a favor and um, comment on iTunes and give us a review, it always helps to uh, knock us up a peg. One great thing is that on iTunes now, if you look up cigar reviews, we're on we're like in fourth or fifth listed, which is awesome. awesome. Yeah, way awesome. And on Potomatic, we're always, always hovering the, around the top five. Yeah, exactly. So that's great. So keep listening. We appreciate all you do for us, and don't always and always forget. Don't don't always forget. <laughs> always, <laughs> always forget, forget <laughs> that you listened and listened to him again. <laughs> nice save. <laughs> what the hell? I'm gonna have like a little men in black thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've forgotten that you've listened to this episode and you're going to start it again. Listen again. And if you do decide to listen to it, oh, and this is one thing I found out. Yeah. If you're going to watch it on YouTube and you don't have time to listen to the whole thing, please just skip to the end for us because that actually counts as a, a viewing on it if you skip to the end. So Okay. Yeah. If you don't have time, say, you know, if you're at work and your boss comes up, just go to the end and then close it. Okay. That way you don't there get you in trouble. And, if, and the end where we usually uh, give the details on the special. Mm-hmm. Oh, so let's talk about the uh, the website. 
We were to talk about that? I, I thought we were going to tease that. Oh, we are? Yeah, we're teasing oh, that to the tease. end. Tease. Okay, sorry. Let's not talk about the website and talk about something else instead. Summer movies. Maybe that next segment? Damn it, we have nothing left to talk about this segment. <laughs> I, I just, I'm, I'm not looking at the time today, so I don't know how long we've gone. We've gone 19, we're 20 minutes right now. Okay, so yeah. Okay, let's, so let's save let's, that for the next segment. We're going to back up a little bit. Start. When, when okay. did I start talking about stupid shit? Let's see. At, right at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> right when you sat down. All right, everybody, that does it for about the uh, first third here on the Vega Fina Master Blend Masterpiece, Masterpiece 2012. 2012. I'll get it right at some point. By the end, By once the I've end. had more drinks. So we'll be right back with the uh, second third. Keep stay. Uh, yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Stick with us. <laughs> this is a segment for later. All right, everybody, we're back with the Eclipso Cigar Review second portion of the podcast, and we are reviewing the Vega Fina Masterpiece 2012. 2012, 2012. What do you say? You say 2012? I say both. It just yeah. depends on what comes out of my mouth. Yeah. Which you never know what that's going to be, is you can Bunch tell by listening bullshit. to this. Yeah. You listen I just, to this podcast, you know we don't know what the heck we're talking yeah, about exactly. sometimes. Yeah, exactly. I just sometimes. pulled off my band, and it comes off real easy, so that's nice. You get a nice-looking silver-black band that you get to... Put in your collection if you're a collector of cigar bands. Oh, and we need to address the box. It's a really cool box. It opens from the middle like a book. It, yeah. I'm, I'm doing a hand signal so no one can see what I'm doing, but yeah. it's really cool. We'll have a picture so of it on the... It's on worth the, buying a box just to see the box. It comes in a box of 10? Is that right? 10, yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, what are you um, thinking of this cigar? I like it, man. It, it's definitely kicked up in the second, uh, third to a little more full-bodied. Mm -hmm. Um Definitely full flavored. I'm still, you know, for me it's medium because I smoke a lot of cigars. Yeah, but to not, a lot of people, it might be full body. But, but I think this is a good starter cigar. Great. Yeah, for someone who doesn't smoke a whole lot, it's going to give you a lot of flavor and it probably won't make you sick. So, mm -hmm. hey, good yeah, non-offensive non, non -offensive cigar. I'm a fan of this cigar. I really am. Mm. Don't smoke it often because we, it is a limited edition, so we try to save those for the, for you guys. It's nice of you guys. It is Thank a you. lot of a lot of um, B and M's you go into, and I've seen this firsthand where you get in there and they get a new box of something that's pretty hard to get, and boom, it's gone because the guys that work there pick yeah. it all up. Yeah, like the ground. And it's like you know you think like it's kind of sometimes you get some cigars that are really hard to find. Like there's a lot of Liga stuff that you know they're Unico and they don't make a whole lot of them. Mm -hmm. And you'll see a box come in, and I've been at a, a certain B and M, not this one, where they had a box come in, and the guy was there opening it up. Another guy was there, and he like bought the whole box, and I'm like. That's pretty rare. Usually, yeah. they don't let someone buy the whole box. Right. They'll buy them. That limited. They'll yeah. you know limit. They'll get two. You can get two, and that way, other you know people yeah. can come get some. And then after the fact, I found out the person who bought the whole box was a freaking employee. That's <laughs> like, ridiculous. Wow. That's wrong. Yeah, that's not cool. That'll never all. happen here at Calypso. I mean, that's you know, it's a nice benefit for that guy because he works at the B and M. But that just kind of really, you know, kind of dings the. Uh, the person that goes in there all the time. There. Oh well, yeah, you had to cigar bomb customers. me a feral pig because a feral flying pig because I'd never had one. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, and that was nice of you to do that. By the way, different, different, uh, different strokes for different folks on that. So, I always like going to to B and M's that have the the little bit harder to find stuff. And that you know, I'm okay with being limited on what I can buy because number one, those are usually pretty expensive. Right. But number two, I know I'm going to be able to go in there later and still probably get a couple of them. Yeah, so exactly. that's a cool deal for me. You know, I hate going to places that just have the same stuff everybody else has and nothing else that is really stand out. Nothing special. Yeah. yeah. Like strip bars. <laughs> they have two cigars, and exactly. they're really expensive. Absolutely. I spent almost 30 bucks for a Macanudo one time at a, at a – this, this was a sports bar. <laughs> it was a sports bar, and I'd had a few, and I was watching a baseball game, and it was a really good game. And uh, I saw they had a humidor, but I didn't feel like walking over to it. Mm -hmm. So I asked the waitress, I said, just bring me a cigar. And uh, she goes, do you want to see the list? And I said, does the list have the price on there? She says, yeah. And I said, no, because I, I don't. I know it's going to be a fortune, and I won't buy one, <laughs> and I want one. So uh, she came back. She goes, this is the least expensive one, and it was a Macanudo. I'm like, okay, whatever. So I smoked it, got my bill. And it was like, holy crap, it was like twenty-seven dollars for the Macanudo. <laughs> It was the Prince Phillips. It was the big one, but still yeah. 27 bucks. <laughs> was it a Cuban mac and you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I had one to, of them one time. <laughs> I, went to a, I went to a liquor store in Austin uh, to get some stuff uh, when I was over there visiting my dad recently. And uh, the guy there was, you know, I was talking about cigars to somebody else that was in the store. Cause we were, he was going, he had a hat on. Mm -hmm. 
and um, I think it was like Urca hat or something. So I was telling him about the thing I was going to, and he's like, oh, I'm going to that, and bar, we got talking. The guy behind the register is like, you smoke cigars? I'm like, yeah. He's like, dude, we got cigars. And he pointed to the little thing they had, like the little humidor. Yeah. He's like, these are really great, man. Everybody loves these. You should buy one of these. And he handed me, and they had these in a bucket by the register <laughs> called Cuban Counterfeits, and it looked like a Cohiba. And okay. I'm like, you yeah. keep them in a bucket? And <laughs> he's like, yeah, man, they're great. Proper like, storage uh, right there. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to pass on that. How much is it? He's like, six bucks. I'm like, uh, yeah, now you keep that Cuban yeah, save counterfeit. save that for your customers. <laughs> save that for your regular customers. Yeah. And the other guy behind me is like, no, man. <laughs> he was shaking his head like, don't do that. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, I'm getting 30 cigars tomorrow. I think I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Well, summer movies. Yeah. Got a list of some things that are coming out. Are you a big summer movie guy? You look I, forward to the summer movies? Yeah, I, you know, there's a couple times a year when my, my kids really enjoy going to the movies, and it's usually the summer movies. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I got kids, so I tend to go to whatever kid movies are coming out. But I do have a 14 year old daughter, so I get to do see I do get to see some of the action stuff that I lean her towards. Um, so I'll you know probably go see Iron Man and I'll probably see Star Trek and right. That's about the well, Iron Man's already out. Yeah, you know, but uh, so I didn't wasn't going to include that. But okay, okay. Uh, first one I can see that pops out: Great Gatsby. I don't Leonardo know. DiCaprio. No, I like I'm not Leonardo interested. DiCaprio, but you know, I I could. It was hard for me to get through the book. Yeah, <laughs> much less the. Movie. I think the book's overrated. I've it tried is, to yeah. rate. I had to read it in high school. It was required. Yeah, and I've since, as an adult, thought you know maybe I'd under, I'd appreciate it better. No, it's, so I'm not interested yeah, in that. I, and I was one of those books I tried to read on the can. You know, like, <laughs> it took me like six months to get it done. Oh, and I kept falling asleep on the can reading. Okay. A, yeah. Star Trek Into Darkness. I know yeah. you're into that. I'll go see that. Yeah. Yeah, I probably will pass on that one. Hangover Part 3 is a no. huge Passover. That's a big pass for well, me, not too. Watch that. No. After Earth, that Will Smith thing. Nah, that's a pass for me, too. Nah, I'm not interested. Of course, we got like Fast and Furious 6. Joy. I'd have to watch the first five to even know what I was talking about. Yeah. Here's one I'm interested in The Internship. What's that? I haven't heard it's, of that. Uh, it's uh, the reuniting of Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. The one where they Google. Yeah, the they Google go work at Google. Yes. Yeah, that Can't sounds wait. interesting. Yeah. That's been too long since they've made a movie together. Yeah, that should know? be pretty fun. Absolutely. Man of Steel. I'm in. I'm I'll not go, a big I'll superhero movie, but I'm in. Yeah. I, you Zack know, Snyder. I like the way they're going with the Superman franchise for this. One. Hopefully they'll. they'll what do a good. cast. Good grief. The cast is amazing. Yeah, you got um, great. Oh, yeah. Was it? Uh, who's the parents? You got a uh, uh, Kevin Costner's his dad and, and Diane Lane. That's that's the earthly parents. Yep. Russell Crowe's the. Jarrell or yeah, yeah. Jarrell. Uh, Amy Adams, Lawrence Fishburne. Wow. wow. Oh, that's right. Lawrence Fishburne is uh, Barry White. Yeah. Not Barry White. Perry. Perry White. <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne Barry is White. Barry, White. Barry White. Oh, yeah, Superman. <laughs> Go kick those guys' butts. <laughs> this is the end. Very interested in this. That that's one looks the hilarious. Seth Rogen. Yeah. That looks really good. And see, I have a theory. I, on ha it. I think the trailer is the movie. Yeah. I think we're going to be disappointed. I hope not, because I have a theory about movies with too many comedians. And when you have too many funny people in a movie, mm -hmm. typically the movie is not funny. Yeah. And if they happen to have behind the scenes stuff on the DVD or Blu ray, typically that's a lot funnier than the and movie. What, it was up in the movie. Because yeah. you have these guys who do a lot of, you know, improv and. A lot of it strays away too far from the script, so they don't end up using it in the movie. But that stuff's freaking hilarious. Yeah, and yeah, you watch so the movie, and you're like, eh. why, didn't, "Why didn't you put that stuff in there?" Yeah, exactly. Of course, that has Seth Rogen, uh, Jonah Hill, James Franco, Paul Rudd, yeah, Craig Robinson, Jay Bushnell, bunch of yeah, tons of people. I'm interested. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'm be like, there. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping it's good. Yeah, I'll World get really War drunk. Z. I'll get really drunk before the Brad Pitt zombie movie. You know, I was a real big fan of those books. Um, if you don't know, Max Brooks wrote those, who's Mel Brooks' son, and the books do have a wicked sense of humor to them. Really, but they're not told in traditional story methodology. It's basically little vignettes. It's like you're reading someone's diary, like oh, a segment of their gotcha. diary about what happened when the zombie apocalypse started for them, right? And how they survived, or if they did survive. And so there's really no main character with the book, but the movie is very much about a main character. And it looks like they just took segments of those vignettes, stuff that was interesting in the book, and kind of worked them into a cohesive script. Right. So it also doesn't look funny at all. So I'm kind of like, ah. Red Pit zombies and not funny. I'm out. Uh, yeah, I don't know about I'm that. Out. Kick Ass 2. I like the first one because it was different. I might go see you the know, second one. And I think we've talked about this, but I think uh, Super was a lot better. And, you know, it's in the same vein as Kick Ass, but. I, I thought Super was a much better movie. Jim Carrey looks pretty interesting in this, though. Have yeah, that's that? an interesting adding, adding Jim Carrey to the mix. Yeah, because he looks really weird. He looks like he's going off the edge there, so that might be kind of cool. We've talked about this already. Lone Ranger. Mm-hmm. Pass. 
Yeah, I'll wind up watching it. I just I'll, don't. Think I'll, I'll end up seeing it because my daughter and my wife are real enthusiastic about it. But I, I'm still not. It just reminds me too much me. of the one from the '80s that was crap. And <laughs> so, it's Pirates of the Caribbean too. Yeah, Pirates of the Lone Star. The, well, so this is one for you and your kids. Lone yeah, Despicable Me too. Yeah. Were they Despicable Me fans at all? They they loved Despicable Me. I liked Despicable Me. It was actually pretty funny. But um, I Russell don't know. Brand's in it. Was he in the first one? He was in the first one. Okay. Yeah, he was the old guy. Al Pacino was he in the first one. No, he's the new bad guy. Okay. So Steve Carell, of course. I'm sure he'll yell all his lines. Hoo ah! I'm the bad guy. The great Steve Carell. Yeah. He's the main guy. Right. Uh, here's another pass. Grown Ups 2. Mm. Maybe one night on the video, if I'm really bored, I'll pop that in one day. Another example of a movie that's movie with too many funny people that's supposed to be funny, but wasn't really funny. And it's Adam Sandler being Adam Sandler, and that's always annoying. Yeah. Uh, Although I did like... There were um, some see, elements of the first... The, the baby that was still breastfeeding at yeah. ages seven. That was kind of funny, but for the I most like, part... I like Adam Sandler in non Adam Sandler type stuff like yeah. I liked him in Punch Drunk Love Spanglish I thought was yeah decent. Spanglish was pretty good yeah, yeah. Bad. and I actually made the sandwich from that that's in the one he makes oh the, really the recipe's online it's ridiculously good is it you should make it I have to give a shot Wolverine I'm the a sucker Wolverine. I'll go see that one yeah okay. I'll go see that I'm a sucker for that oh uh, here's one for the Smurfs 2 oh that is top of my list of not to see <laughs> <laughs> Red 2, I never saw the first one. The first one's entertaining. I, eh, it's not a movie, go. I'll wait for video on that one. What's this one with Ryan? Oh, Turbo? Never heard of it. It's got Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds Paul Giamatti, Snoop Lion. Oh, Jesus. He's really requesting people to call him that? Yeah. Snoop, Snoop Lion. Lion. Wow. Oh, and Sam Jackson's in it, of course. You gotta I, have, what the hell is that about? I don't, I don't know, know what the hell so that's about. A, oh, it's a DreamWorks sports comedy animation. Not in, Oh, it's just, an animated thing. I oh, am. Yeah. Uh, what else we got here? 30th? Or 30th? <laughs> what? I can't read. <laughs> it's 300. 300? Oh, Rise there's a sequel Empire. to 300. Yeah. 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 30th. Yeah. It's uh, not even the same. It's like a prequel and doesn't have any of the same people in it. So Zack Snyder's not even doing it. So, eh. Uh, not interested. Pass. That should be straight to video. Let's be honest. We're the Millers comes out August twenty August ninth. What is that? Great cast called We're the Millers. What the, who's that? It's uh, Jennifer Aniston, Jason Sudeikis, Ed Helms, Emma Roberts. Good cast. Uh, it's a road trip comedy about a drug dealer Sudeikis, who uh, gets Jennifer Aniston a stripper to pose as his wife as they are transporting drugs across the country or into across the border or from Mexico to the U.S. You had me at Jennifer Aniston as a stripper. There you go. <laughs> That's it. That was it. Two Guns with Denzel Washington and Mark Wahlberg. That actually looks pretty interesting. I saw I that trailer. The trailer. Yeah. You're Doesn't... next. Um, that's a horror flick, right? Oh, yeah, that looks good. I saw the yeah. trailer to that. That looks pretty cool. Similar to The Outsiders or whatever that was that came out a couple of years ago with Liv Tyler. What was it called? The Strangers. The Strangers, yeah. Yeah, yeah similar to that. People like uh, just shoot people in the house and yeah, just, you know, hold yeah, the house hostage, house. basically. Yeah. Yeah. The trailer was awesome. Yeah, the trailer the was very cool. intense. Yeah. Anything on not on the list that you're aware that's coming out? No. There's um, one called Mud with Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, that Mud looks, looks interesting, really yeah. good. Mud looks good. That does look good. I'm, I'm interested in seeing that one. Um, I don't know if that's a good a theater watch, but I have a, you know, a kind of a thing that I do now um, just because of, number one, the economy. Number two, because I have a, you know, home theater. So I think a lot of people do now, and that's really cut down on, on people going to the movies because you got people with, you know, big TVs and nice stereo systems. So I tend to, the movie either has to be a really big, summer blockbuster with lots of explosions and sci-fi that I want to see in the theater yeah. or it has to be something that's that I is limited release that I want to see in the theater that's really interesting to me story-wise. Yeah. So that's really the two that I'll go see. But what I end up seeing is every kid movie that comes out because that's what I <laughs> that's what they want to see. So Yes, cuz you had 4 minutes of fun several years ago now you have to watch yeah. kids movies. Despicable Me yep. 2 in 3D, <laughs> in 3D at the IMAX for $17. Each. Ouch. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Oh, man. Movies are out of control, man. Well, sometimes they kill a movie by releasing it in the summer. Yeah, know? they really do. Uh, I can't think of an example right off the top of my head, but it just seems like every year, and I think that Mud might be one of those movies that's going to get killed because it, it's not a summer movie. No, it's not. Is that coming out like real early in the summer? I don't or remember exactly late? when, but I, I saw it on a summer list the other day as something to look forward to. So. Yeah. Usually, we'll I think if they if they release those later in the summer when people have summer movie fatigue, yeah. then they tend to do a little better. If you're talking like August or September, then you know they probably do okay. Right. But, um, no Transformers this summer. What? 
what is up with that? I don't know. But the new one's being made with uh, no Shia. So Shia's uh-huh. out. And Megan uh, Fox Mark was out is, before. Yeah, because she called Michael Bay a Nazi. And uh, <laughs> Mark Wahlberg's in. So Mark Wahlberg is the new guy that's going to scream and yell and well, so be I'm frustrated. Out again. Yeah. Dang it. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I really have never had any interest in, in those movies. But I've heard they're cool. They, they, special they're, effects look cool. But, yeah. yeah. If you can, I mean, the, the funny thing is, is they get away with so much in those movies because of what they are. Mm-hmm. I mean, the second one had probably the two most racist characters in a movie in like the past 20 years. Really? And no one really said anything about it just because it was, you know, it's a kid's movie and it's fun. It's like, that's some racist robots right there. Wow. It's really kind of weird that they let that go. Wow. I hadn't heard anything about that. Yeah. Plus Michael Bay has like, I don't know, diarrhea of the character where he just, he's one of these guys <laughs> that puts like, I'm going to put 30 additional characters that really don't need to be in this movie and give them screen time. And it just really drags the movies down. So he needs a, he's trying to get people sag cards. He severely needs an editor. Yeah. And, um, and if you don't, I mean, there's actually a, if you're into the movie scene as much as I am, there's actually um, edited versions of movies out there. They're called fan edits, yeah. where they take a movie and they'll cut out all the stupid crap oh, and cool. make it into a good movie. So <laughs> I think but... kind of kicked up with uh, Star Wars Episode One: Phantom yeah. Menace. Yeah. There's so many fan edits out there that just completely cut Jar Jar Binks out of the movie completely. Really? And it works. <laughs> he doesn't need to be in there <laughs> at okay. all. Uh, I'm a dummy. I've not seen any of the later three. Yeah. Oh, you're no, you're not missing much. Uh, man. I loved the first three. I mean, you know, I'm not saying I'm a snob. I don't like any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. I loved the first three. I probably saw the first Star Wars thirty times before I was ten. Yeah. You know. And, I, uh, I, I can. Yeah, I can say I did that too. And, um, but you know, it's just too much and yeah. um and now with disney taking it over and star wars movies coming out every year for the next five years oh, God. that's really gonna just kill it i think for a lot of people disney and has done so much damage they really have i don't know <laughs> i'm just waiting for them to buy mattel you know yeah, and just, they, yeah. they're gonna own everything pretty much at that point they'll start buying at&t and <laughs> whoever else you know <laughs> walmart yeah who knows <laughs> they're just taking over the world yep. as long as they stay away from my cigars i'm fine yep we will not be reviewing the Disney cigar. <laughs> the Disney cigar. <laughs> the Woody. The Woody. <laughs> comes with a little hat cap. you got to cut the Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think I'll pass on that. <laughs> Jeez. Out. So oh. what? what's the big summer movie is it when you were a kid that you remember, couldn't wait to see, mm, and then I mean, you finally saw it, and you were just like, yeah. I you got know. a couple. One I'm really mad about. Um, yeah. because I really wanted to see Raiders of the Lost Ark when it came okay. out. And my parents would ship me off to um, Eagle Pass, which is a little rat hole of a uh, town that's a border town near Mexico. And it was such a rat hole that they had one theater, and they only showed movies that were like six to nine months old. Right. So I was there when Raiders of the Lost Ark came out. <laughs> and my dad called me. He's like, I saw this movie with Han Solo, and it was great. I'm like, Raiders of the Lost Ark. I've been reading about it in uh-huh. magazines. I really wanted to see it. It just sounded like, you know, I yeah. liked the old serials and stuff. Right. I grew up watching those. Yeah. Little King Solomon. It's all that stuff, you know. Right. So I was totally into it. I wanted to see it so bad. By the time I got back, it was gone. And I was like, oh, man, are you <laughs> kidding me? So I didn't get to see it on its first release. But they brought it back like, uh-huh. right after the summer for like a limited time, and I got to see it then. And I, I was blown away by it. It was awesome. Well, I have a similar Raiders of the Lost Ark story. I was very interested in it. And, um, but we, my parents, you know, they had three kids, modest income. We, we didn't just rush out to movies. So what we would do is wait till they came to Big Town. Big Town was a mall here in the, one of the suburbs mm. that had a movie theater, but only show, it was a dollar movie theater. Mm. So it showed eight, nine month old movies. Yeah. So I saw Raiders of the Lost Ark in like February. Mm. And oh, after, wow. <laughs> so there you go. All yeah. my friends had seen it, but you know, so whatever. Yeah. But uh, I remember just couldn't wait to see, uh, boy, it just totally left my head. What was it called? Heavy Metal. Yes. <laughs> Airheads. Airheads. With Adam Sandler. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> What's no. the movie with uh, Michael J. Fon- Back to the Future. Back to the Future is awesome. Yeah. That's couldn't pretty- wait. We saw that in the summer. That was awesome. Yeah. I saw that in the summer, too. That's probably one of the, that's one of my top ten watch it every year almost perfect movies i don't think it's held up as well as many think uh, it has but it has held up, up. Good, it yeah. has held up pretty good but i just love the way everything's tied together it's a little probably too neat of a bow yeah, it but is. it's still really fun movie you know i i hated the second one 
Yeah. But I liked the third one. I liked the third one, the, too. They tried to cram too much into the second one because they were trying to set up the third. And I just thought the second one was a mess. It was a mess because it was just it suffered um, a lot from sequelitis where yeah. it was just too much the same as the first one. But let's take the first one, rewrite the script, and stick it in the future. Yeah. It was just the same story, yeah. basically. So, yeah. Eh. And to a degree, the third one was kind of the same, too. But I liked the Old West stuff, and I liked it. It was cool. I dug the third one a lot. Yeah. And, you know, back then, I didn't think Mary Steenburgen was very attractive. But as she's gotten older, she's not a bad-looking woman. She looked good in Step Brothers. Yeah. Oh, great in Step Brothers. Yeah, she's hot. Absolutely. Not There's bad. a sequel of that coming out. Or they're starting, they're going to film it. Oh, are they? Yeah. I think oh, after sweet. they finish filming Anchorman 2, they're going to finish. Cool. Yeah, Mary I like Step Brothers a lot. That was hilarious. Great movie. Great movie. I like that one better than Talladega Nights. I wasn't a real big fan of Talladega yeah, Nights. Yeah, I, I, I've seen Talladega Nights, but not all the way through in one sitting. I've yeah. seen it in pieces, but... Uh, all right, so we're at about the end of the second third here. What do you think? Thumbs up. Yeah. Very nice. That's a lot more leather in the second third of it mm -hmm. and a little bit of earth. and um, Very, very earthy, I think. Yeah, and it melds quite well. Mm -hmm. It's a good, well-balanced cigar. There That's probably go. one of the more well-balanced cigars that I've had in good a job. long time. To me. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Okay. Well, very that's nice. in for the second third for us. We'll come back for the last third, and we're going to... Booze it up and smoke some s'more. Smoke some s'mores. Smoke some s'mores. Jesus. I was just getting ready to compliment us on a good segment, and then you <laughs> said we're going to smoke gonna, s'mores. We do have the Alec Bradley uh, table lighter. We can make some s'mores. We can make some s'mores. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back, guys. All right, everybody, we're back for the final third of the Calypso Cigar Review Podcast, Episode 11, and today we're reviewing the Vega Fina Masterpiece 2012. What do you think? I really, it's really, it's, it's not complex, but it's definitely full flavored. Mm -hmm. I would say medium body, mild to medium. Mm, a little more than that. It's more medium. Than that. Yeah, it's it's, medium. It starts off a little mild and then but, gets yeah. medium pretty quickly. Um, as far as just taste, the taste factors off the charts it's really yeah good, good got taste. a lot of leather and spice if you like that uh spice kicks up in the second third the retro hail is really clean on it so you're not getting a lot of um you know gack in your nose from from retro hailing it's just going to be something you'll want to retro hail to get all the additional flavor um, i get more of the spice and a little bit uh, a lot of the earth on the retro mm -hmm. hail um mm -hmm. keep that smoke in your mouth and it's got a real good flavor to it yeah it's a just a good full-bodied no full medium flavor. well medium bodied full flavored mm -hmm smoke absolutely and it is very consistent and what was the word i used earlier s'mores well balanced, <laughs> well balanced. <laughs> it's a well balanced smoke. s'mores wasn't what no, you were talking it's about. not does not taste like s'mores okay no it if you find a cigar that tastes like s'mores that might be worth a shot I, I might want to smoke it yeah we'll see so let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that are going on here at the clipso yep. cigar shop and lounge the website's going to be up soon it should be up now as we're talking. Excellent. Okay. So, yeah, we, we record this a week out or so. Yeah. So, yeah. Website time you're hearing it, it will be up and running. And that website uh, URL is? CalypsoCigars.com. Hmm. Very simple. Easy to the point. And what we're going to do, it's, it's really kind of cool. You can access the podcast there as mm -hmm. well. And then right next to the link where it says podcast, there's a link that will say podcast deals. Mm -hmm. And all the deals that we've offered... Uh, and each podcast will be listed on there, and you can just, boom, put it in your shopping cart, secure credit card transaction. That sounded weird the way I said that. Secure, secure transaction. It would be a secure way to purchase those, purchase things, those yes. with your credit card, yes. Okay, cool. That's awesome. And uh, you're going to have... Um, is this this the site is going to be a POP site or a POS site, right? Yes. So you can actually yeah. purchase yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You can all the right cigars on, you can right go there. on the site. Put it so in the shopping have a, cart and, and go, go to And you'll have other sections there where you can pick cigars and have all the cigars. And we're, we'll in. have a cigar deal of the week that we offer here in the store, which will also be available on the website. Okay. So now as far as what you can buy from or through the website, are you going to be able to get the uh, Little Havana stuff from there? We haven't decided how we're going to do that. Little Havana is our house. Our house blend. I think we're just going to keep it to deals mm, okay. for the most part. Uh, they're tasty, buddy. but they're going to be some really good deals. I know. I think we're going to have a Liga number nine deal in there. If I'm not mistaken, that's coming up. Mm. So for uh, those Liga whores out there, yeah, just keep uh, keep visiting the site every week, and uh, you'll see what we've got. CalypsoCigars.com. Easy peasy. And uh, let's talk a little bit about a bit of every player. <laughs> this is our greatest. <laughs> this episode. is the best yeah. show ever. I'm not even smashed. On Garrison Brothers. No. 
Um, so let's talk a little bit about a little bit about what we did on episode ten, which was the word that I can't think of right the now. The event. You know, we had the event, but yes. then we decided to do a oh, raffle. The raffle. The, yes, raffle. the raffle. There it is. The raffle. So the raffle. The idea there is that we're going to have a five dollar raffle ticket that you can purchase through the site or by calling Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge at. 972-761-9903. You can also send us a check by mail if you'd like to do that. It's five dollars for a raffle ticket. Buy as many as you like, and what that raffle ticket gets you, raffle tick, raffle tick. <laughs> what that raffle ticket gets you is actually a chance at ten super premium cigars. All the stuff we smoked on the podcast as of yet, and it goes like this: You'll get from episode one the Alec Bradley Filthy Hooligan, which you guys still yes, have in stock. Still have. Yep. Now, how many of those do you have in stock? That's a question. Not many, but we'll save one for the for okay. the 10-pack. All right. And we also have the second cigar we smoked, which was the James Norman Nicaraguan Puro. Great smoke great. and, and kind of hard to get. Not everywhere. Yeah, very so, hard to get. Yeah. It'll so be a, a chance for you to try it. Yeah, great great chance. And it's a good smoke. You guys will like it. Mm-hmm. Um, Esteban Carreras Covenant, which is an awesome smoke. Another um, one that's hard to find. Really full-flavored, full-bodied, just deliciousness. A pound of fudge. Remember as, that's how he described yeah, it? Yeah, as, he, as the rep described it, yeah. The uh, El Baton. And uh, are we going to do the uh, Toro size or the, the double Robusto? Is that the size you're going to do? Um, I think we'll do the Toro. I, want, I think we've got Robusto and Bellicoso, so you can pick. Okay. Choice. And then from the uh, Altidus event, we have the Trinidad, Par- Trinidad Paradox, which is a good smoke as well. And then one of my favorites that we smoke so far is the Pedro Martin Fiera, which is a full flavored, full bodied firecracker of awesomeness. That's awesome, great. It's a another one that you might not have tried. This yeah. is a chance to try. Kick ass cigar if you haven't tried it. Great cigar. And then uh, the Sublime cigar, which is a good medium bodied, kind of um, lighter. It's probably one of the lighter smokes we smoked. Yeah, but it's still got a lot of flavor. Yeah, it is full flavored. Yeah. And then our our favorite, the uh, Hoya de Nicaragua Dark Corojo yes. in the Corona size, the Peligroso. Mm-hmm. And then after that. We had Matt on, and we each smoked a different cigar. Now, Matt actually smoked the Hoya de Nicaragua, so there's that. You can actually pick that if you want. So you can get two of those. You get two of those. Or you can have the Alec Bradley Creo, which is the Lancero Alec Bradley In Tempest. In the Tempest, yeah. And it's fantastic if my you haven't favorite, had it. It might be my favorite cigar it's on a great, the planet. It's a great cigar. Or you can also get the Undercrown Corona Viva, which is one of my favorite cigars. So if you like the Undercrown, Viva's the best size. If you haven't smoked it, smoke it. Now, the last that you get to choose from, you actually have 25 cigars to choose from from the Garrison Brothers event, including the Liga 9 and a whole yep. bunch of other stuff that's yep. just great. You had some Alec Bradley stuff in there. You had some Rocky Patel. Rocky Patel. Uh, it's a, yeah, it's that, a giant list. Carreras, yeah. A lot of stuff. Yeah. A lot of stuff in there. The uh, Chupacabra or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So you got a lot of great cigars that you can have there for five bucks. You five know. bucks and you get a chance to win ten of those. Yep. So definitely jump in and uh, get a ticket. And uh, episode 20 is when we will reveal... Be- the lucky winner lucky winner and we'll you know we'll get all your information and everything so that we'll know how to reach you know where to send you the cigars Mm -hmm. and unlike a lot of other internet places we know how to ship cigars we've shipped tons of them and uh they'll all be taken very well care of before they get in the box and they'll be boxed in a very professional way in a secure way with love with love and maybe we'll throw in a cutter and a lighter you never know awesome awesome sauce right there so We've been talking about songs earlier today that are stuck in our heads. <laughs> I want I want uh, Randy to tell you the songs that are stuck in his head. I've got two of the weirdest, you know, from one end of the spectrum. To, I've got Song Song Blue by Neil Diamond in my head. And I've got Lick It Up by Kiss in my head. <laughs> Might be the only person on the history of the earth that has ever had those two songs simultaneously stuck in his head. And I've been trying to stick them in Brandon's head because every time in the break I start singing him to try to get him hooked. <laughs> yeah, I, no. got you on, I got you on Song Song Blue there for a second. Yeah, you, you did. I was singing it. Yeah, I was singing that one, yeah. yeah. I, I just, man, it kills me that it seems like all the songs that get stuck in my head are songs that I don't necessarily want to get stuck in my head. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely. like, I don't necessarily love this song, but there it is, and I know all the freaking lyrics. Yeah, yeah. It's like crazy how that happens. So what are some songs you love to hate? Mm. I'll tell you one that was stuck on my head on and repeat. And that you hate to love. And that you on, hate to love, too. Yeah. On repeat mm-hmm. when I was a kid. And I, this song almost drove me insane. Literally. They're coming to take you away. That oh, Dr. Demento yeah. song, oh, coming to take you away. Oh, coming <laughs> to take you. Oh, just, and it just oh, over God. and over and over in my yeah. head for like weeks. And I was like, God, get out of there. Getting ready to drill a head and <laughs> drill a hole in my head like scanners just to get that freaking song out of my head. <laughs> that was one. Duran Duran, Girls on Film. I don't, you know, I didn't like Duran Duran, but I saw the video and it had yeah. boobs in it. So oh, that's yeah. That's a great video, yeah. Yeah, stuck okay. in my head for a long time. Um, just, uh, geez, Mickey. Nikki? 
Mickey. Oh, Mickey. Oh, yes, yeah. I don't like that song, but that song just stuck and that, you just wind yourself singing it all the time. It's yep. like, stop it. Yeah, and my, my, my four-year-old, who mm-hmm. um, they listen to you know music at school and stuff, was singing a Justin Bieber song. And she wasn't singing a Justin Bieber song. She was singing one part of the Justin Bieber song <laughs> over and over and over again on the way to Austin. It's like a three and a half hour trip. Oh, no. And she just kept in, oh, baby, oh. I'm like, ah, oh, just I want to throw things at her and make her stop. But, you know, <laughs> and then I'm catching myself singing it. I don't even know the freaking song. Just, uh. I am fortunate enough to say that I have never heard one note of a Justin Bieber song. Well, now you have. Well, you didn't really sing it on key, so I'm still going to say no, that. No, yeah, okay. That's okay. Fine. It's horrible. You don't want to know the the horribleness of any Justin Bieber song. And it just you know, screw you, Disney, and your pop music and all the crap that comes along with it. Well, I'm going to Rick roll our listeners. They're never going to give you up. Song. Jeez. Yeah, that's the one that gets it just you. Then. Sticks, it's sticks there. in there. Ugh. Another one of those singers. It's not the way you think either. I remember when I heard that song. I'm like, oh, okay, it's you know, some big black guy, and ends up being this little nerdy white dude with red hair. <laughs> like, what is Howdy Doody singing this song? What the hell is that about? <laughs> That's just the weirdest thing, man. That was the podcast Rickroll right there. That, that was cool. the podcast Rickroll. And we're going to stick it on the video version of this. <laughs> <laughs> just put a You're not supposed to warn in. people when you Rickroll. Oh, it'll be before this part. So they'll okay, already have had the Rickroll. <laughs> like, Damn you, Calypso, a cigar review in your Rickrollness. <laughs> Is it even still cool to Rickroll people? I don't know. People still do it. So yeah. I imagine it's still maybe the older. One guys of our customers was telling a story. They were playing uh, some music trivia game. Mm-hmm. And it was like the lyrics were on a card, and then you had to pick, you name the song and everything. Mm. And this guy picked it up, and it was never going to give you up, never going to let you down. He's like, I just got Rick Roll. (laughs) 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 That's awesome. Very funny. God. And what is that guy? That guy's still doing stuff. I think he's doing a song with. um, Somebody, I saw something on the news about it. He's doing something Rick, with somebody. Was it Rick Ashley Rick, or Rick Ashley? Ashley. Like, yeah, I don't remember what it is. Yeah. Rick asshole made a song that sticks in my head. <laughs> I have a buddy that does karaoke, hosts karaoke shows around town. And mm-hmm. when that song came out, what? Well, not when the song came out, but when karaoke started getting real big in the mid nineties, mm-hmm. he was like, "Hey, I want you to do this song. This is for Rick Rolling and everything." And yeah. I said, "What's one?" He told me that. I'm like, "I'm not gonna sing that." <laughs> Come on, man. Girls love that song. I mean, it sticks in your head, but I don't yeah. want to sing it. <laughs> you probably have the range for it, too. Probably. All you got to do is sound like a little, uh, just go like an octave up from uh, Michael McDonald, and you got it. <laughs> <laughs> it does have that little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got the. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. That's a Michael, every, <laughs> I said it before. Every Michael McDonald song. You don't have to know the lyrics. Just. <laughs> That's it. That's all you got to do. Never put the two together that, yes, he is just the, an English version of Michael McDonald. Yep, but better diction. <laughs> yes. You can actually yes. understand what he's saying. You know, people, there's an article in a, one of the local magazines I was reading. It said that Eddie Vedder ruined rock and roll because of the way he sings. And, mm-hmm. you know, we've talked about Eddie before. Yeah. And I am a big Eddie Vedder fan. I just His singing is annoying. But Michael McDonald was the Eddie Vedder before Eddie Vedder was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, easily. <laughs> that's it you know just that's that's every freaking yeah just Uh we get a concert with michael mcdonald eddie Eddie (laughs) better and be drunk because you would then you really wouldn't understand exactly you might it might might actually there you go you would understand everything they said and go these guys are great songwriters (laughs) they're speaking to me lyrically like you understand what the hell they say are there lyrics in that song? I don't know. But they're scatting. I actually that like, like a, that. Jam, Pearl Jam has some good lyrics. You that, just have that, to, al- that 10 album was one of the greatest albums yeah. of all time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great album. Great album. I have an empty lighter. Uh-huh. Dang it. Dang it, man. <laughs> there you go. Okay, now how the hell do you open this? <laughs> you tard. There oh, you go. It's my, I hate tricky lighters. It's my free lighter. That I've had to salvage for you twice. Yep, for my event. That you don't Can't know how to fill light. Because, don't yeah. Fill. Well, it's, kinda, it's a shitty lighter. I couldn't figure out how to light it, but you... It's got the little punch, which I never use. I'm not a puncher. I don't punch. Yeah, we should uh, talk about that real quickly. Punching if you're gonna versus punch, cutting? If you're going to punch, punch a small ring gauge cigar. Okay. Anything under 50, you should be okay with punching. What about- if, if you want to do that. Anything over 50 ring, you've got to yeah. cut. What about multiple punching? I've seen people punch like three or four times on a I cigar. I think that's just, it, hey, to each their own. I just think it's 
But it also saw defeating the cap the go just the it cap just was destroyed. just destroyed. So you yeah. just should have cut it to begin with. You exactly. Know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I still haven't tried a V cut. Um, I think I tried it. I once. used to love the V cut. I really did. I tried it once at a place, and it was a crappy one, so it just destroyed the cigar. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, great, you know. But the guy ended up replacing it for me and showed me how to use it. But I felt like an ass. But still, <laughs> it was you. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I was going to say, it wasn't me. <laughs> no, it wasn't you. It was at a different B and M. We will not mention here. No. But, um, but if you ever are in the Richardson, you're in the Dallas Fort Worth area, and you're in Richardson, uh, come over and see us. Tell us you heard about us on the podcast, and uh, we will treat you with great hospitality. So, when is the next event? We haven't decided yet. I think Ezra Zion is oh, going to yeah. be our next one. We're going to get this. Oh, cigar. Yeah. We're going to be reviewing that pretty soon. That's fancy. Because he uh, ordered uh, ordered some this week. Oh yeah. And we will be the first shop in Dallas County to carry that cigar. Hmm. It was like three shops in Tarrant County, but none in Dallas. You're getting it right here first, people. Oh, yeah. And we will review it. Cool. And we'll do a special. Awesome. It'll be fun. Awesome. Is that, you know what that comes in? It's like a 20 or a 10 box or what? I don't know. I don't know. We just we'll ordered it. I think it's together. 20. I think it's 20. Cool. I'm looking forward to that. Something new. Yeah. Fantastic. So, oh, I tried a new cigar. What was it? Hold on. Let me think. Hmm. Oh, no, it wasn't a new cigar. It was a really old cigar. Did I tell you this? An 80-year-old German yes. cigar or something? Yes. So I, I had the um, experience of smoking an, a cigar from 1926, I think, is what I found out it was from. So that's 87 years. Yeah, 87-year-old cigar. This guy got it at this place called Cigar Museum. Mm-hmm. And um, he sent me a couple to smoke with my grandfather and my dad. And I uh, had a friend of mine that also had one from the same guy. So we were at this event, and I brought mine, he brought his, and I'm like, hey, what the heck, let's smoke this 80-plus-year-old cigar. Mm-hmm. And I thought for sure, number one, I thought, I'm going to cut it, it's going to fall apart. Yeah. But it was a Perfecto, and it was open, so you didn't even need to cut it. So I'm like, okay, I don't have to cut it, great. And then I lit it, and I'm like, it's going to taste like paper and ass. And sure yeah. enough, it was very mild at the start, but had a very, it was leather and a little bit of spice. It actually had a little citrus to it. I was like, what? Really? This thing still has flavor after 87 year old cigar. It wow. Flavor. And what's the story behind? I don't know. Nazis rolled it. I have no idea. But um, well, it was not just. We support a, Nazis, by the way. No, we don't. But um, I just, you know, it was just one of those things you can go to this place called the Cigar Museum and they have these really old cigars mm-hmm. and you can buy them and smoke them if you want or keep them or whatever. So. Yeah. It was just a unique experience, and you know, I'm I'm all for unique cigar experiences. If you get the chance to smoke something that not everybody has or that nobody can get, mm-hmm. you know, don't keep it and lock it up and never smoke it. Smoke the damn thing. I mean, that's what they're for. They're for smoking. Have you had those uh, Fidels that we have here? Those legal Cubans. It's pre-embargo Cuban tobacco. Mm-mm. So no. it's it's over 50 years old. Oh yeah. And we've had them in the humidor now for five years to age, aging, and uh, we've got them in five packs. Oh really? Yeah. I guess that's what we'll be doing after that podcast. <laughs> Is this something I can get from Matt? Or? No, we we have them out on the shelf. They're in the, the oh, yeah? man. Yeah. Okay, I'll have to try one of those. Yeah. Pretty good? You like them? I did not at first. Yeah. They needed to age. And since before, and that's why we hit them and didn't sell them or anything. And Matt brought them out of, uh, about four months ago. We tried them. Went, yeah, there's, yeah, they need to go on the shelf now. Something there. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, I just, you know, fully expected it to be super, super mild with no flavor yeah. and nothing. But I was really pleasantly surprised at the amount of flavor in an 87 year old cigar wow and it uh, didn't really fall apart on me till like the last third like right when i was getting near the end it was just went just see kinda... that so it shows that if you store it properly mm-hmm. these things will last yeah take care of your cigars people if you don't have a humidor and you have more than 10 cigars you probably need a humidor yep get one store them correctly yep. go see a good tobacconist in your area and have them show you how to season it or watch the video that we'll put up soon. Yeah, because we're going to do, yeah, do, do a video. Yeah. Or listen to episode nine. Yeah, episode nine. We explain we, it very well. Very well. Great detail. To, I did it myself the other day uh, based on what they told me, and it worked fantastically. I've got a great season. There was one little that, hiccup in there, though. Yeah. You sent me a text like two days later. You're like, man, it's not good. I'm like, no, you need about five to <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you well, were expecting was, magic in two days. Well, it had already been pre-seasoned, so I oh, thought, okay. well, it's less time because it's already been yeah. seasoned before. But yeah. No, you really need to get it. I left down. it. I left it over the weekend. I went for the long weekend and came back. So it actually had seven days on it. Good. And um, it is, I mean, you let that that uh, top of the humidor go uh-huh. and just, poof, psh, yep. just goes down real slow. Yep. It's got a great tight seal on it. Awesome. See, we know what we're talking about here at Calypso Cigar Shop and yep. Lounge. And I got a Bovida pack in there, and it is uh, holding at 69, which Good. is a little which higher is, than I normally yeah, like. But yeah. 
that's where I'm keeping my everyday that's, stuff. That's so. a good range. 69 is a good range. That's yep. a good number. Great number. For a lot that's of a great reasons. number. Yeah. 69, dude. Because here I was born. That's the main reason. It's the I was born in 70, but whatever. Dude, I'm older than you, huh? So I'm the elder member of this show. Yes, you are. So you the elder statesman. Say. Yes, you have to you have to obey your elders. Yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to do it for us today, I think, on the uh, podcast. I'm at the uh, near the oh, end of my... Oh, what's the Slam Internet radio situation? Oh, oh, um, he, he uploaded... Um, episode, he, he's uploading them kind of out yeah. of order. Uh, yeah. eight, eight and nine are on there now. He's going to put the other ones on there. Okay. He's putting them two at a time, uh-huh. uh, and he's spacing them out, so he has some time to, to get people to listen to him. Yeah. And uh, the bios are going up later today, supposedly. We'll see. Okay. Um, so yeah, we need, do need to mention that. Um, if you are a fan of the podcast, or if you just found us for the first time on YouTube or whatever, don't forget to add us on iTunes. Uh, you can look us up as Clips of Cigar Review there, or just look up Cigar Reviews, and we're number five there. Um, you can get us on Podomatic. You can get us on Spreaker. And actually, this is a kind of a cool little thing. They're uploading us on Spreaker, mm-hmm. so we don't have to do it anymore because they're oh, doing good. it for us. Yeah, awesome. Um, Podomatic is the other. That's the big one. That's the main one where we're from. Um, YouTube. We're going to have the YouTube videos up there, and you can comment and review on the YouTube videos. And don't forget to look at the comments on the podcast because we'll have lots of links in there for soon will be the website. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also have links to where the deals are, yep. uh, links to all the places, the uh, forums that we frequent, and uh, the sites that we like. So check us out on all and those locations and please. like us on Facebook. Find a Clips yeah. of Cigar Shop and Lounge on Facebook. Like us, comment. Like us it just, there, comment. It just helps us to reach more people. And we always appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. So that's going to do it for us today. Um, Overall, great smoke, a good, consistent, uh, well-balanced cigar with a lot of flavor. And I was very pleasantly surprised by this. And stay tuned for future episodes. The, the, uh, what's it called? The Nika. Yeah. Really Nika that's coming up. Yeah. The Alec Resigns coming up. Nika Puro's coming up. Yeah. We got all kinds of good stuff coming up and we're going to hopefully get some reps in here to visit again. We'll probably end up having the, uh, Esteban Carreras rep back because he's a, a hoot. He's a hoot. Yep. And uh, hopefully we'll get some more booze on the show. Yep. Dan That's Garrison. Uh, also go to Dan Garrison's Facebook page and like him at the Texas Bourbon. Mm-hmm. He had some really nice things to say about us after the uh, visit. I don't know if you read his comments or not. On yeah, his, I did on yeah. the site. Yeah. Very cool. Very yeah, cool. Very cool. So check out GarrisonBros.com uh, yeah. as well. And they're not paying us to say that. We no, just they're like not. Him. We just he's like a him. way cool dude and he's yeah. got a great product there. So if you can, if you're in the Texas area, check it out. It's delicious. So come back next week. We always appreciate you listening, and it was great smoking with you. See you, Brandon. See you, Dan- Brandon. See you, Dandy. <laughs> <laughs> we can't even Son end of a the bitch. show. We can't even end the show right. You suck. Son of a, you you suck. are not a professional broadcaster. I'm drunk. No, I'm not. I can't even use that as an excuse. We love you guys. <laughs> Later. Later.